Hello and welcome to The Situation Report today. Glad to have you joining. This is the show where we do our very best to give you the information and perspectives you need to navigate an ever-changing culture. My name is Jeremy Stalnecker. I am your host today. And today we have back on with us a guest that we've had in the past, and many of you, most of you perhaps, would know her. Sarah Gonzalez from The Blaze is with us today. And we are discussing in the interview that you're about to hear uh, much of what's happening across the country, but certainly in the state of Texas with uh, drag queen shows and so many other issues related to sexuality. Uh, we've talked to Sarah in the past about the transgender issue. These crazy issues, these crazy things that used to happen in the dark, in the shadows, we knew they were taking place, um, now are very much, at least it appears, mainstream. The question, I think, people like me and maybe folks like you are asking is, what can we do about it? We see these things happening. People like Sarah are exposing these issues and exposing these events and calling them out. She's gotten very involved in doing that. Um, we see that happening, but what, what do we do about it? And that's a great question. And I think that's the question we all need to be asking. Again, there was a time where we could say, well, that's not going to affect me or my family or my community. But we can no longer say that because it will affect us and our families and our community. We need to finally get to the point where we stand up against the evil that we see happening around us, these uh, situations that our children and our families are being put into, uh, understanding that particularly as people of faith, we have a responsibility not only as citizens and as parents, but as Christians to do the right thing and to stand against evil. And yet for so long, many have remained silent. It's time for us to stand up collectively and use our voice. But again, this always comes back to the question of what can we do about it? And I'm thankful for people like Sarah, who not only reports on what is happening, but has taken the steps necessary to bring people around, coalesce them around this cause, and create some momentum that is then creating action that hopefully will put a stop to this. And uh, very grateful that she would come on and talk to us about that today. My guest is Sarah Gonzalez. Before we jump into that, though, um, I would imagine if you've been to the grocery store recently, you've noticed that things are more expensive. Gas is more expensive. It doesn't matter where you live in this country. Things are more expensive. The economy, our economic future is uncertain. And we have to ask ourselves the question, what is it that we can do to protect our financial future for our families, for our children? What can we do personally? Uh, one of the things I would recommend is at least considering adding gold and silver into your IRA, your investment accounts. Take a look, figure out how to do that, and see if that is the right fit for you. The place that you can start is with Lear Capital. Call Lear Capital, and you can get their free precious metals investor guide. You can also ask them about their Lear Advantage IRA that lets you transfer or roll over your old 401k or IRA into a gold and silver tax advantage IRA. Plus, Lear is offering right now Crazy shipping, uh, free shipping, and up to $15,000 in bonus gold or silver with a qualified purchase. This is something you at least need <laughs> to take a look at. You can call for details, 800-489-6450. Lear Capital is the most rated precious metals company on consumer affairs with a near-perfect rating on Trustpilot. Call them at 800-489-6450. That is 800-489-6450. Calling that number, you will get your free kit and there you will learn how gold has performed during periods of inflation, government debt, interest rate hikes, economic crashes, even wars, and how in all of those gold has been the financial bedrock asset in portfolios. Uh, one of the things I love about Lear Capital is that they are an American-owned company, proud to do business with Americans that share conservative values. Write this number down, 800-489-6450. Call them today, or if you don't want to call, you can click the link below in the show description and the show notes. Check them out. You will do yourself a great service by at least investigating Lear and what they have Great to, to have offer. back on with us today, Sarah Gonzalez. For those that, of you that are not familiar, she is the host of the News and Why It Matters on the Blaze Network, as well as a political commentator and maybe most importantly, a mom. Sarah, thanks for coming back on. Really appreciate it. 
Yeah, thanks for having me back on. So last time you were here, we talked about transgender issues, which thankfully that's not an issue anymore. So we can just move right past that. That's all <laughs> died. That's all died off. We don't have to talk about it anymore. Um, Whoops. It, it's it's crazy, but what used to be on the periphery, what was on the fringes, is now sadly become very mainstream. And uh, you know, a lot of your work, it appears, has turned toward dealing exactly with that and dealing with family issues, uh, teaming up with the Texas Family Project. And I'd like for you to talk more about that. But our families really are under attack, not just in Texas, but across the country. And it, it's the craziest thing, even the videos that you've posted recently of things like the, the drag queen shows and, you know, a lot of that stuff that's going on. Again, it used to be something that happened in the shadows. We knew it was happening, but it's also illegal and we would keep our kids away from that. And now we have videos of small children sitting and watching things that I would not, as an adult man, um, go and participate in. What has happened and why are we at this place right now? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, looking at how the left has been very slowly, incrementally infiltrating all the different uh, facets of society so that they could do just this. I mean, you see what's happened to academia. It's yeah. completely backwards on its head. Right. And, you know, they're so they've infiltrated um, in the education system. They've infiltrated in, you know, just all of these different places and the medical community, you know, which I, I think that we talked about the last time I was on the yep, program yep, is that yep. we have doctors who are actually saying that, you know, children should be doing this. Yeah, and right. so you get to a point where they have their activists have been so active that now they have infiltrated and now society has just been degrading and degrading because they have been the ones to shape society and to shape culture because they have been out there and they have been vocal. And as we know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. And I really do yeah. think it's that simple because they know that if they can get away with things like this, you know, we're talking about drag shows where children are allowed to be with sexually explicit yeah. songs playing yeah. in the background. Um, they know that if they can get away with that in places like Texas, of all places, you know, a conservative area of Texas, yeah. they know that they can get away with it anywhere. And so I think they really are just pushing the barriers, seeing how far they can get away with it, because anytime anyone criticizes them, they can raise their hand and say, oh, you're a bigot, you're a transphobe, you're yeah. you're this, you're right. that, and people back down. And so I think that they, that's that has been their path, and that has been the way that they have been able to, you know, basically get whatever they want and shift society into a downward spiral. I, um, I'm here in California, and we have a lot of problems. I will not pretend like we don't have our problems, but it has been fascinating. We were just talking about this a little while ago before the show, that uh, these drag queen shows and a lot of this stuff right now is happening in Texas. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it happens in California, but if it does, it's certainly not being publicized. I don't know anyone, uh, whatever. We could talk about that. But Texas seems to be the battleground for this. Um, why is that from an agenda perspective? Why is it Texas? Why is that the place where this is happening right now? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it goes back to to my previous statement, which is just if they can get away with this in Texas. Yeah. Where right. can they where can they not get away with it? Right They're They've been so emboldened. They've been so empowered. They've been so embrazened uh, with this agenda that they're pushing. They're just doing it. They're, I think that they have a sort of a a wave of arrogance about them that they're just like, we've got you know, look what we've turned California into look what we're putting in your school libraries. Look yeah. what we're doing. We can get away with this in Texas because the moment that you criticize us, we're going to cry about it and call you all of these mean names. And for the average American, that's very scary to them. Now I would also yeah. urge the average American who knows that this is wrong. The people in Texas who see this and don't speak out because they're worried about being called names. Remember, they're going to call you the names anyway. So you yeah. might as well be on the right side of history with that, right? But I, I really do think that it really is as simple as if we can get away with it in Texas, we can get away with it anywhere. And unfortunately, so far, uh, Texas lawmakers have really been too quiet on this, yeah. um, not wanting to step up to the plate. And uh, sadly, you know, even in Texas, just because you have an R next to your name apparently doesn't mean that you will, yeah. uh, you know, stand up and speak out for all things conservative as we're finding out the hard way here in Texas. Right. As a parent, this is something that's really hard for me to understand. I have two adult kids, but then I have two teenage kids and um, you're a parent. One of the things that's so baffling to me about a lot of this is that as a parent, someone who... Um, 
would say that their life is devoted to protecting their children, to raising their children, to educating their children, that they would participate in this. Is this a case just simply of people want to be part of what is seeming mainstream? They want to be part of what is um, provocative or liberal or whatever the word would be, and they're willing to to pull their families into that. What's the what's the motivation? Do people really believe this is okay, or is there something something else going on? I, I just I can't even fathom allowing my kids to be a part of of any of these things. My adult kids, I, I mean, there are things I talk to them about right now mm-hmm. that I don't want them to watch, to participate in, to do. I can't control it, but I, mm-hmm. I'm very engaged with them on this. I cannot imagine taking a four or five year old kid to to some of these events, and it's much bigger than the events, but. Are these families, these parents really, they're okay with it or is there something else happening? Yeah, I do think that uh, a large majority of the, I will say it's almost exclusively white women who are bringing their children to these particular events. I don't typically see, very rarely I will see men along with the women bringing the the kids. Now, there are grown men there, but they're usually there with their wives and they're there, you know, without children. (laughs) Right. Which I still don't understand, by the way. It's crazy. I'm not going to say that, that yeah. that's not no, weird. Um, yeah. But as far as the 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 kid aspect goes, uh, this is just my personal belief, okay? Uh, because I see how sick society is, and I see that you know the left has basically embraced wokeism as their religion. They don't they yeah. don't they don't believe in God, right? They don't right. they don't have religion. So this wokeism is their religion, and so they do believe that it's perfectly fine because they've been so hypersexualized in our society to think. I mean, I, I actually have grown adults who tell me. When I go to these things and I record these things and I expose them, they look at a grown man wearing makeup, dressed provocatively, dancing on top of a table in front of a, ch- a young child who can see up that grown man's skirt with their bloomers on, right. uh, being tipped, being handed dollar bills. And they'll tell me, I-, I don't see anything wrong with this. That's not sexual. And so – I really think it's a case of society being so desensitized to what sexuality even is that they look at something like that, which to you and I, reasonable Americans, you know, God fearing Americans look at that and go, that's not at all appropriate for children. They look at it and they think, well, there's nothing wrong with that. No, uh, taking dollar bills as tips isn't associated with strip clubs. No, I mean, they, they just they have no idea because they've been so desensitized. And unfortunately, you know, it seems to be exclusively white single women who are dragging their kids to these. And I mean, I would say I won't hold you to this, but I would say that white liberal women are, you know, just a stain on society these days. Sure. Um, and I think there's a lot of mental illness that, you know, is not treated and instead embraced just as we see with all of the transgenderism going on. And I think that it has led to obviously, you know, disastrous consequences. Michael Savage used to say back, back in the olden days, he used to say on his radio show that liberalism is a, a mental disorder. And it was kind of a funny tagline, right? And everybody make fun of him for that. And he put on t-shirts and coffee mugs and stuff, but I mean, we are at absolutely seeing that right now. It is a mental disorder. It, yeah. It's unbelievable. Um, we we used to share the idea of family values. So there used to be kind of a common understanding of what it means to have family values. You could go right. back to the 50s and 60s, even mainstream television really embraced family values. That has changed over time. But culturally, we always kind of had an understanding of that. That has been completely eroded. When we talk about family values or when you talk about family values and getting back to that, um, how, how would you define that? Since there doesn't seem to be a common vernacular anymore, how would you define family values? What are we trying to get back to? I mean, I would say we've got to get back to, you know, God uh, I would say faith, family, freedom, right? So yeah. we got to get back to God. We've got to turn back to God as a society. Um, we have to stop rejecting him. And obviously you and I uh, haven't done that, but the larger part of society has. And, you know, you have to instill biblical values into yeah. our children. And it, it's interesting because I've had this conversation recently with a, a friend of mine who is not necessarily religious, but is to the point where she's like, 
I still would send my child to a private school that was religious yeah. and that did teach the Bible and did teach these concepts because they're all good concepts, right? right. Regardless of whether or not you believe in God, yep. The, yep. these biblical values, these biblical teachings are still good values to have when you're talking right. about how, where your place is in society. And so, you know, it's gotten to the point where it's just like, all right, believe in God, don't believe in God. But these are good values to have that every American should strive for at least. And when it comes to, to family values and, and children, I mean, you protect the kids at all costs. And that means protect their innocence. They're only yeah. young once their minds are not ready to comprehend adult things. Even if we're not talking about sex, other adult matters, their right. brains are not ready to, to, to handle. And so, you know, I think that, that protecting their innocence and protecting them from being exposed to any sort of adult material is, should, should be high priority. And when I say that, I'm talking about the phones too, right? I, little children should not right. have access to right. smartphones or computers right. or play online Nintendo because there are bad things out there and there are bad people who could prey on them. And so, you know, it really, really is like you've got to be hyper vigilant as a parent to make sure that your children are staying innocent and staying in kid world, age appropriate kid world for as long right. as they can. There are uh, a lot of pundits, and particularly in more your world than my world, a lot of even right-wing pundits, people who talk about all these things, scream about them often. Um, you have taken a step beyond that, though, and you've gotten involved personally in uh, not only exposing these things by going to them and exposing them, but talking about them, um, some of the partnerships that you've gotten involved in. Was there a turning point for you where you went from, I'm going to expose this on my show and use my platform and talk about it, to I personally need to get out and get involved in what's happening? Was there a, a moment or a turning point? Was there something that happened where you said, all right, enough is enough. I'm going to get out of the studio and go do something about this. Yeah. I mean, I, I had covered them just from a journalistic aspect, yeah. right, of going into yeah. these drag shows and, and seeing for myself what it was and making sure that if there was something that didn't look right, the rest of the world could see it. And right. so I got to a point where, number one, I kept being gaslit by the left uh, in saying that there was yeah. nothing wrong with it. But also, number two, <laughs> I have a big problem with, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example. I went to a drag show, an all ages, a family friendly drag show, as sure. if that was ever a concept <laughs> sure, um, in sure. Roanoke, Texas. And um, I, I exposed some of what was going on there. And a lot of people I was I was mad because I said, where are the men in this community right. who will come into this establishment right. and cause a ruckus until right. it gets shut down? Where where are those people? Because I'm a mom. OK, yeah. I'm like little five foot four petite mom who has to go in here and cover it. Where are the dads? Where yeah. are they? And so yeah. I got a lot of people who said, hey, I'm in the community. I didn't know about it. I had no idea that this was going on. I don't know how I didn't know about it, but I didn't know about it. And so I heard that enough times that I said, you know what? I need to, I need to form something. I need to start something where people can sign up. You know, I've built this platform on social media. I have the reach to to reach right. people who may not be hearing about these things um, and and making sure that they are aware because we need to start participating in the same type of activism that the left has been participating in so long to be able to shift society to a place where you and I are actually having a conversation about all ages drag shows. Yeah. You all have helped build my pillow into the incredible company it is today. Now, Mike Lindell, inventor and CEO of MyPillow, wants to give back to our listeners. Right now, MyPillow is offering exclusive offers on their bed sheets, their six-piece towel set, and even offering an extended 60-day money-back guarantee. Orders placed now through December 25th will have an extended money-back guarantee through March 1st. The bed sheets are marked down as low as $29.98, and believe me when I say you will get a great night's sleep in these. Their six-piece towel set is made with USA cotton, comes with two bath towels, two hand towels, and two washcloths, typically retailed at $89.98, and is now just $39.98 with the promo code. There is a limited supply, so be sure to order now. Call 1-800-870-0283. Use the promo code SITREP, or go to MyPillow.com, click on the radio listener square, and use promo code SITREP. Um, it's interesting you talk about the men. I just finished reading a book called, um, and off the top of my head, <laughs> um, I think it's called Men 
Fight For Me. I think it's what it's called. Men Fight For Me or Men Fight For Us. And it's about sex trafficking and mm -hmm. um, kind of the sex trafficking industry. Fascinating book, great book. But the, the fundamental principle is if men will stand up, stop watching porn, stop paying for sex mm -hmm. and all these things. If men would do what they're supposed to do, then this would all go away. And, and man, you mentioned that. That's, that's a great point. Have you seen men, as you've been involved in this and talking about this, stand up and get involved? Or is this moms who are saying, well, men won't do it, so we need to? I think that we're starting to wake the men up to this. Yeah. I think that we are. Um, previously, it has been it has been a bunch of moms. I mean, you saw it too whenever COVID happened and they were shutting down schools and they were forcing kids to wear masks. And you had all of these moms showing up at the school board meetings, you know, screaming at the the school right. board members for doing right. this to their children. It, it Somehow it was, it was the moms. And I mean, part of me doesn't put all the blame on the men. Maybe I should, but part sure. of me just puts a blame on society for sure, mas sure. making women more masculine right. and making men more feminine. And so we see the results of that, right? We see our men yeah. uh, sitting in the background, not wanting to get too involved, you know, not wanting to make waves. And you see the women standing up and saying, no, we're not going to take it anymore. I'd like to believe that that's just a, a mama bear mode, but certainly the dads need to stand up and say, you're not going to do this to my kids. I do think that we're starting to wake them up. We have had a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of men show a lot of interest in this particular, you know, in this project that we've launched, because um, the more and more we expose and the more we get the the information to them, the more they see yeah. it with their own eyes, they can't turn away. Have you seen um, churches and faith communities get involved in trying to stop this? This has been, again, one of the other things from a distance. Um, I was in Plano, Texas uh, this last week, this week. <laughs> earlier this week. Really? Wow. And, um, it, and it was funny that I was there and then you were posting stuff about what was happening in Plano. And, and I'm like, how in the world, first of all, does this happen in this community? I mean, it's a very, mm -hmm. very conservative community. I grew but up there. Is, there's an incredible faith community there. I was at the Hope Center, which you're probably familiar with in Plano. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, the largest Christian nonprofits in America are there. Yeah. So huge churches, huge Christian influence. Are you seeing churches push back on this in these communities or have they... Um, also because they're unaware or lack the will, <laughs> lack the will, remain silent. Yeah, unfortunately, um, and I, you know, I won't say there are none because maybe there are. But yeah, you I can't broad brush any. churches, right? Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. I personally have not seen any, and trust me when I say I am, you know, neck deep in all of this stuff. So I have not seen any. What I have seen instead. Um, are churches who don't want to speak up, don't want to upset anyone. The churches, unfortunately, and I, I speak as someone who grew up in Plano. I still live five minutes from Plano. Um, you know, I'm very familiar with that area. I went to yeah. Plano schools. Um, yeah, and yeah. I, I unfortunately, I believe that it's an area where the churches are too afraid to get involved in any of these because they're afraid that it will be deemed too political and they don't want to get political. So they shy away from it. It's the same thing with the case of abortion, right? There are a lot of churches in the Plano yeah. area who would rather just stay silent because it's such a divisive topic and they don't want to bring it up and they don't yeah. want to polarize anything. So they just stay away from it. Even though we know that it's wrong, we know that biblically God would not allow this. God doesn't right. allow this, and right. yet the churches are too afraid of you know alienating some of their some of their uh, their people, and they just don't speak up. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, when the faith community won't speak up, we have very deep problems, and I think a mm -hmm. lot of that's been exposed even recently. And, and thankfully, I think some of it's been exposed, <laughs> and I think yeah. we're seeing the difference. Uh, between churches that will stand up and those that won't. And hopefully people are getting, um, you know, a clear picture of what that looks like. Um, talk about um, the Texas Family Project and the work that's happening there, um, who that is, you know, what's happening, how it's happening, and, and what you hope to see on the other side of all of that. Yeah, so I'm actually partnering with Texas Family Project, who does uh, so much more than this particular topic. They're a great, great organization, um, but we have launched an initiative called Defend Our Kids Texas. And so 
what we are are doing here in Texas is we've decided, you know, this is this is we're done with this. This is enough. Yeah. We yeah. are we are the majority here. People are just too afraid to right. speak up and speak right. out. And what I've been right. trying to encourage people to do is there is strength in numbers. Don't don't think that you're the only one who has a problem with this. And if I can arrange for all of these people to know about an event that's happening in their community and they can put pressure where pressure needs to be put, perhaps we can either a get it shut down before it even starts or b make it so that it is not able to go on. Right. And so um, I I just think, you know, we've seen enough of leftist activists, uh, you know, getting having a lot of success in pushing their own agendas. And I think, you know, it's all civil, civil disobedience, uh, you know, nothing violent, nothing against the law, nothing like that. It's just, you know what, it's about time for us to take back our communities and take back society. And we're not going to do that by sitting on the sidelines. So we launched defend our kids, Texas. We have a a place on the website where people can go to, which is defendkidstx.com. We have a place on the website. People can go to where they can report. If there is something, uh, you know, that's going on in their community that they've seen that they want us to be aware of, whether it be drag shows for kids, whether it be inappropriate books in school libraries. I mean, we are going after the entire concept of sexual, children in the state of Texas. So um, we have a place where they can report. We have a place where they can join us. We have a place where they can donate. But I keep telling my team, I said, (laughs) I almost don't want the donate button on there because I'm not asking for your money. I'm asking for your time. So often conservatives, we're busy with our own lives because we have families and we have things going on and we go, yeah, I'll chip in 10 bucks and someone else can do the heavy right, lifting, but right, it's like right. we're, we can't do that anymore. We need more of, you know, me out there exposing this stuff, getting it in front of people and, you know, perhaps putting some pressure on lawmakers, on the business owners, on, you know, there are so many places that we could be putting pressure, but I don't have enough people to do it. Yeah, so, right. um, so we've been really successful so far. And, um, I would just encourage, even if people don't live in Texas, um, I, w- I would encourage them to sign up because as soon as we launched it, everyone was like, when are you starting to defend our kids, Michigan? When are you starting to defend our kids, Pennsylvania? And I'm like, right. guys, yeah. I, I named it on purpose in such a way that it could be defend our kids blank because we have every intention yeah. of going nationwide. Give me just yeah. like a few weeks to catch my breath on this one. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'll be back with you, yeah. but, um, but we are really looking to take this nationwide because as you pointed out at the beginning, um, this is unfortunately not just a Texas problem. This is a country problem. Yeah. Well, in Texas certainly is the battleground in, in so many areas right now, uh, politically and, um, in, in a lot of ways, this this is very dramatic, but for the heart and soul of our country yeah. and our, our our constitutional way of life, I think Texas is the battleground. Um, and if it can't be stopped here, it can be stopped anywhere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you think that there has been a shift? And again, I, I don't know. I, I like to look at things hopefully. It's, it's hard <laughs> because there's not a lot of hope. Yeah. But do you think there has been a shift of people recognizing? I look at things like school board stuff, right? And School boards, I mean, parents showing up, but now conservative parents who wouldn't identify maybe as Republican or Democrat, they don't care, but they know they need to get involved in their school boards, and now they are. We're seeing a lot of that happen locally. Do you think in this particular, uh, with this particular issue, there is also an awakening taking place? Um, and, and if not, you know, why not, I guess? I would say 100% yes, and I would say that it was kind of the... Um uh, the intersection of a bunch of things happening at once. So you had, uh, as I, I mentioned earlier, you had COVID. They shut down their kids' schools, right? Um, they were forcing yeah, masks yeah. on their kids. They Now some school districts are saying you need to get an injection for something, <laughs> right. you know, that we still don't know. We're still now yeah, f- fully yeah. learning all of the different side effects um, from this particular injection. But you definitely need to put it in your kid before they can go to school here. And yep. you're having the inappropriate books, right? The sexually explicit books in school libraries, Drag Queen Storytime Hour. All of these things are happening at once. And so with... With all of these things happening at once, parents have become more aware. And that is why you see all these mama bears showing up at the school board meetings. Right. You see all of these groups forming like Moms for Liberty. And, you know, I mean, these like this has awakened a lot of America and it's created a firestorm because as we know, we see it so often. The left does not know how to 
course correct. They only know how to yeah, double down. Right, and so right. they've seen all of these parents g- uprising and they haven't done anything except to say, no, we're going to do it more and we're going to throw it in your face and there's nothing you can do about it. And I believe if everything is counted appropriately and accurately that there is going to be a bloodbath at the polls in November because of this issue. This will be the primary, primary issue is that parents have had enough of the leftist agenda and they're, they want to take back their communities. It's crazy to hear you say it like that because everyone's talking about the economy. The economy is the issue. The economy is the issue. The economy is the issue. I'll tell you personally, I care about the economy because things are expensive, but I care far more about issues like this one yep. because they impact not only what's happening right now, but I mean, my children's future, our nation's future and where we go from here. This, this to me, you're the first person I've heard say it like that. This is the issue I think. Mm-hmm. And I think that is what will motivate people. Mm-hmm. I come, I 100% agree. You know, I, obviously the economy affects people, but of course. I, you know, if I'm thinking, I'm thinking to myself, what do I care more about? Whether or not my yep. child has, you know, content that he can watch without getting right. exposed to things that I don't even want to utter on this program, right? Right. <laughs> right or right. paying extra at the gas pump. I want both to go away. Right. But I, like you're you're messing with uh, Mama Bear you don't want to mess with if you mess with my kids, right? And so I, I really do think that is such, such a primary factor when you're talking about the parents who are going to the polls. Obviously, you know, uh, Joe Blow, who's single down the street, may not care about that. He cares right. more about the economy. Great. We'll take his vote, too, because we see what right. the Democrats have done to the economy. <laughs> right. So either right. way, you're voting yeah. the way we need to vote. But, yeah. um, yeah, I just I really think parents are not they are they have not forgotten what the left has done to their kids. And yeah. they are they are not going to forgive easily. Yeah, that's good. Um You've mentioned this, you've talked about it, but in addition to going to defend our kids and signing up, um, people who are in Michigan, people who are in California, people who are across the country um, that want to do something, but they don't know what to do, what would your advice be to them? This is this is how you need to think. This is what you need to do. Yeah. I mean, I would say, look, it's gotten so simple um, to find all of these events. You know what I, I did that the a couple weeks ago when I had the video that went really viral of the Plano, the Plano yeah. restaurant who held this. I, I literally just went to Facebook and typed in drag brunch and found the ones that were all ages. And unfortunately, wow. Jeremy, it was very hard to figure out which one to go to because there were a bunch <laughs> were going so on. Oh, yeah. All at the same time. Yeah. But 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 what I did was I went. Okay, so there's one going in here, uh, one going on here five minutes away from where I live, where I know the area, and that yeah. surprises me. Or there's one going on down in, you know, the gay district down in downtown where sure. you would expect it to be. I'm going to pick the one, you know, where uh, where I you least expect yeah. it to be and see what happens from there. But I would say get, talk talk to your mom friends, right? This is, this is how we have to, this is a grassroots effort right now. Talk to all of the moms and the dads in the community who are also outraged by this. Go find these events, go expose them, go to your school board uh, meetings, go to your city council meetings. I'm going to go speak at the next Plano city council meeting because I, I was trying to, I'm like, what can we do? What can we do? Where do we need to put pressure? We're putting pressure on everyone all at once. So find out what the laws are that need to be changed. Contact, you know, your local representative. I mean, we really need all hands on deck. And and I think that in your communities, if you guys can be doing that until we get to your state, of course, uh, yes. and then we can, we can help you with that. I, right. I really think city council members are not used to having people in the community actually come to these things. I mean, that, like they really aren't, they're not used right. to members of the community coming out in full force to really right. pressure them to do stuff like that. I think the more we can do that to our elected representatives and the more we can expose this so that we can show video, Hey, here's what's going on mm. in your community. Are you going to do something about it or not? Um, it, I really think it's going to work wonders. Yeah, that's great. Um, Sarah, where can people follow you and um, give the website again, if you would, to defend our kids and anything else you'd like to, to promote or push out? Sure, sure, sure. Um, so they can follow me everywhere on social media. It's Sarah Gonzalez yeah. TX, and there's no H in Sarah because it's just an unnecessary extra letter. <laughs> Gonzalez is spelled with an S, Sarah Gonzalez TX, and uh, it is defendkidstx.com. Um, and it's defend our kids, Texas. And we are, um, we're really looking to make some waves, especially with the legislative session in Texas starting, uh, here in January, they're going to get really used to seeing my face, Jeremy. Yeah. 
Well, good. Well, you, you do a good job and you make a lot of noise. So uh, I just saw your video of uh, you wherever Beto was and you're yeah, out there with Fort your Worth. son. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> hey, thanks for the work you're doing. And um, sincerely, thank you for not only talking about it, a lot of people are talking about it, but for standing up and doing something about it. This is um, what needs to happen and you're leading in so many ways in that. So thank you for doing it and thanks for thank talking you. about it here. Yeah, yes, thank you so much. All right, Sarah Gonzalez, thank you. We were not made to live in isolation. Sadly, many of our veterans feel they need to fight their battles alone. This self-isolation has led to the staggering statistic of more than 20 veterans taking their lives every day. A lot of guys end up drinking, a lot of guys end up losing hope. Someone will go to the VA and they'll try to get, you know, prescription medications to help with PTSD. You know, they'll get pills for anxiety, they'll get pills because they can't sleep, now they'll get pills for depression before they know it. they're taking 12 different medications. And when it's not working out, these guys lose hope. And that's why there's 23 guys a day committing suicide. The mission of Mighty Oaks is to eradicate the veteran suicide epidemic and help our warriors change their legacies. As a result, we've been able to help over 4,000 veterans and first responders by equipping them with the tools they need to live the lives they were created to live. Everything they said just kept hitting me in the heart over and over and over again. It's like all the things that I didn't know that I needed to hear. And uh, I opened my heart to God that week, dude, and like, <laughs> I've been a different person ever since. Our faith-based, peer-to-peer approach has one of the highest success rates of any program available today, offering hope and understanding to those who need it most. We provide our programs and resources, including travel, at no cost to our warriors. I remember talking to a licensed uh, social worker who actually handed me a pamphlet to Mighty Oaks. So I went, and I'm glad I did. By aligning their lives to biblical principles, these men and women are able to lead their families, their communities, and our nation. Our mission is to serve and restore our nation's warriors and families who have endured hardship through their service to America and to help them find new life purpose through hope in Christ. It's your generosity that can make a difference in the lives of the men and women who have fought for our country and our freedoms. Now that they're home, don't let them fight alone. Learn more at MightyOaksPrograms.org. Very grateful for that conversation. This is an episode of The Situation Report, and I hope that you're sharing all of them. But this is certainly an episode of this show that you need to share with others. Uh, this topic is one, again, that we can no longer ignore. We can no longer pretend like it's not happening or like if it is happening, it's not going to happen in my community and my family will not be impacted. Your family will be impacted. Certainly the future of your children will be impacted by these events, by the philosophy and the ideology that's driving them if we don't collectively stand up and push back and stop uh, so much of this evil, and I don't know what else to call it other than evil. It's amazing we've allowed this to become as mainstream as it is. I'm thankful for people like Sarah and others who are standing against it. Please go and check out Defend Our Kids. You can also look at the Texas Family Project and uh, some great resources there and opportunities for you to get involved. One of the great ways for you to get involved, though, is certainly to subscribe to the show. If you have not yet, if you're not subscribed to the podcast, do it right now. You can do it on whatever podcast platform you're listening from. And then share this out with others. There are people who need to hear this conversation and uh, need to know how they can get involved. That would be fantastic. Take some time. When you get a chance, go over to YouTube. You're going to spend time there anyhow. While you're there, go ahead and search for The Situation Report. That is our show. You'll find us there. You'll find our channel. Subscribe, hit that notification bell, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. Again, thank you for watching and thank you for listening. We look forward to talking to you next time.